Take a breath, step outside. Welcome to Indigenous Ways Wisdom Circle this evening. We are so excited to have you all with us this evening. And as always, before we start, we would like to acknowledge the caretakers and ancestors of these Pueblo lands. And we also would like to acknowledge all the ancestors and caretakers of your land where you come from as well. And we love the Pueblos here in the New Mexico area. And we'd also like to talk to Mother Earth, tell Mother Earth, thank you Mother Earth for having us here on your beautiful land. And also like to honor Father Sky. Thank you Father Sky for giving us protection as well this evening while we have this show. Uh, Indigenous Ways is dedicated to bridging cultural exchange with people globally. And we're so blessed to have this virtual event this evening. We will be recording and archiving this on our website. So we have our Wisdom Circle Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And we have our concert series Friday at 6 Mountain Standard Time. So real quickly, I would like to just tell you how excited we are to have Beata Sosi Pena. Beata is a caretaker of the land. She walks in beauty. She walks in peace. She walks in harmony. She walks with her people and she walks with all others. And to me, she's the epitome of walls of separation going down because we all bleed the same color, red blood. We are all five-fingered ones and Beata is the epitome of all this. She's a mother, she's an activist, she's an eco-friendly, living in a good way person. And without much ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Beata. We love you, Beata. Thank you for being with us. Right on. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Un diat gindi, with your respect. Un sengi te iri. Ne huahi wot di povi. Ne hapo oinge amu. Ne navitoa ke amu. I'm from Santa Clara Pueblo, from the Badger people and the winter people. And um, I was asked to be on tonight to talk about our strengths, what keeps us going. Um, and I think as indigenous peoples, we have a lot of practice in that. And for myself in these times, I've been really doing what I always do this time of year, which is um, walking the land, walking the irrigation ditches, walking the rivers, going to the gardens. We've got a big community garden in Española um, called the Española Healing Foods Oasis, a project we've been working on with community for about five years now. So getting that up and going and checking on things, and it's really been a big blessing and I don't know what I would do if it wasn't for the teachings of our plant relatives, of our seeds, of our elders who saw to it that this knowledge was passed on despite white supremacist, colonial, hetero, patriarchy that we've had to endure for a long time as global peoples. They made sure that these were passed on to us. And I don't know if I could hold it up. Hold it up. This is our four colors of corn. And there's a lot of teachings that come with these corns from our corn mothers, but um, I'm holding those in my heart tonight, talking to you all with a lot of respect for those that pass that knowledge on for the ancestry and heritage that we come from as human beings for the evolution we're still in process with 
you know, and um, I don't doubt that anything is possible as long as we stay grounded in our land-based strengths as peoples. And last night I had the privilege of being on my ancestral lands with my ko'o'ing, my aunties, with my metme'ing, my uncles, with our little ones to plant a blue cornfield in my ancestral homelands. And I know that it's because of the resistance of Pueblo peoples that I'm still in my ancestral homelands. And even though we're land-based, we do come from a lot of strength in resisting these forms of oppression that would try to erode that strength. But I have witnessed over and over in different circles and different fires and different communities, the incredible power that is held in communities today, in indigenous communities. And um, that has never diminished despite what we face all around us and that we struggle with on a daily basis, that power has never diminished and gone away. And if anything, just know that you are here today in your full strength um, and that we have even more that can come to us when, it, when we tap into these ancestral ways of knowing, of being with land, of being with our teachers that are non-human beings and relatives. Um, and so I'm just gonna start with, I, you know, I do a lot of writing with my work with, um, and to back up a little bit, you know, um, I work with the organization called Table Women United here in Española. It's led by native women. Um, all of them very dear to my heart. And we're joined by a lot of community, a lot of collaborators, a lot of our family of different diverse backgrounds and um, who know the importance of centering indigenous people and indigenous families as we move forward in these times. And not much has changed in that regard of what we need to do looking forward. You know, when we start centering indigenous families, thinking of the future generations, everybody is protected alongside them. How do we restore what was taken? How do we restore this earth from the environmental violence that we face on a daily basis? And so a lot of my work with Table Women United is an environmental health and justice program. And we face a lot of um, threats and harm on a daily basis, you know, it's just in my, my community, we exist adjacent to constant military occupation by Los Alamos National Laboratories um, with nuclear weapons production and, de and weapons development and research. Um, we're in efforts trying to protect our ancestral sites with fracking and oil and gas. Um, and there's so many people that are lending to this effort and see the importance of it. And even though we're um, in different circumstances right now. It doesn't change what's going on. And so I really ask with all of our collective strength that we stay vigilant, that we stay informed, that we reach out to each other on how we can get involved and how we can, um, yeah, if we're here on these phones and computers, let's make use of that time, you know, and we need a lot of help. I'm asking for help in this work. Um, because, yeah, we have days when we're tired, you know, and we need people to help pick up that torch. We need help passing this torch on to the next generation of this um, beautiful legacy of resistance and strength. So, um, I do a lot of poetry to process the things I experience in navigating um, what it means to have justice for Native communities. And I've been blessed to be working with indigenous farmers from Guatemala and Rabinal 
So shout out to Quechua Lu, Madre Tierra Association, the Garden's Edge in Albuquerque. Uh, we just got back from a trip out to Guatemala uh, mid-March where I had been wanting to go since we first met with them about 10 years ago and they've been coming to our communities and helping us to rematriate amaranth seed, which is one of our traditional foods. And um, <clears throat> I was finally blessed to go out there and see where they're at and visit their beautiful place. And um, let's see if I can show you this amaranth seed. So we've been working with this plant. It's very majestic. Let's see if you can. I'm going to hold the camera down. Okay, there's the seed. You can see how tiny it is. It's getting all over my computer. <laughs> um, and this plant has just taught me so much. And I got to bear witness to how it is helping people literally come forth from genocide. And to my family from Guatemala, um, you know, they have a big long story of massacres that happened in their community in the 80s, uh, our generation. And so it's a familiar, it's a familiar um, tragedy and very great evil that we see this this kind of action happening, and a lot of it happening at the hands with the assistance of our own government. Um, so we have a responsibility to our relatives in the South who directly responsible for sending this seed out and sending this strength and medicine and food and wisdom to our communities, um, which is why we have corn and these beautiful foods and amaranth and it's very important that we are able to continue to share this knowledge with our indigenous relatives from the South. And so I'm glad that these connections are being maintained. Um, and so I'm gonna start reading some poems. And this first one, um, since I'm talking about amaranth, is a poem I wrote about amaranth and when I learned about it, and then I'm gonna read another, this was written about 10 years ago, and then I'm going to read another one that I wrote a couple months when I got back. It says, which is the Mayan Achi word for amaranth. I fell in love with Amarante this summer from the moment that Cristobal's magic hands formed soft circular beds in sandy dirt, plowed up by borrowed tractor that unearthed pottery shards so old. And then his brown calloused hands sprinkled tiny white seeds on top of the circles he had made in earth. We paid attention as he taught us knowledge that came from indigenous mountains in Ravinal, Guatemala, from hand woven cloth and ceremonies dressed in white, dressed in rainbows and beautiful mujeres, strong espiritu montaña, all smiles and dark ancient eyes that has seen much history while they knowingly cultivate their own. Knowledge that traveled here in continuation of the old connections, that traveled ageless roadways buried beneath modern time. Macaw feathers and jade and plundered graves tell stories of this. And now Cristobal, whose family was murdered for industry, gently buries sacred seeds. And I think about Edson's words and stories from his elders how this majestic plant named Cez, revered like corn in Pueblos, sustained and nurtured the intelligence of Mayan people. Over time created vast cities that spoke with constellations, purple fields that blanketed hundreds of acres of rolling mountains in a place blessed by rain and celestial origins that cultivated and loved Amarante. All violet, magenta, rainforest, green purple brilliance containing complete B proteins that needed no name, nurtured advanced civilizations that lived in lush beauty that eventually fell under the glare of Spanish domination. They saw how important this plant was to the people and burned thousands of acres of crops, cut off the hands of people who were caught trying to grow it. The people grew it anyway. 
and the seed survived, lived to be planted among pot shards that came from a similar time and place, survived to be planted by those descended and connected to the old ones who died to save it. The trees are turning yellow red before their sleep and now Julian, whose eyes are bright alive, teaches me about harvesting these seeds. How when they are ready, hundreds will fall from brent over bright purple buds effortlessly into your hand with a gentle touch. Confidently, he breaks a few and puts them upside down inside a bag. And Silvia, a mother of four garbed in color, whose strong voice carries her forward as a woman of purpose, demonstrates cooking with this amazing seed. Golden atole popped in a fire, ground into flour, sprinkled on food as cereal. I drink two full delicious cups with and without sugar. The children cannot get enough of the popped kind. They insist it's popcorn and continue to eat. While my hands become stained pink as I rub the seed out of its flowers against the framed screen. We speak of winnowing and I imagine the wind carrying the dried parts away. The seed falling onto a waiting container. Delicate masses of creationism, the size of a grain of sand and so plentiful. I honor the plant with prayer now chopped at the stem that came from a line of seed stretching across ages, sharing our within our DNA. I like to think we are acclimatized to it, stronger and able to adapt. As we still draw knowledge from plants who store the weather patterns in their memory, who are diligently stored and grown by generations of hallowed hands, such an honor to plant the seed and walk the roadways of remembrance. Even the plants have stories to pass on. So that's when I was first learning about planting amaranth. I'm going to be planting um, our beds at the Healing Foods Oasis uh, probably Saturday morning. So maybe I'll try and figure out a Zoom to do a little workshop um, how to plant amaranth if any of you are getting seed from us. And if you need amaranth seed, let us know. We got, we got lots to share. So when I went to Guatemala this time, um, it was really amazing. You know, it's a whole long story. I won't get into the details, but it deserves its own space, that story. So um, I'm not going to speak too much about it other than that we have a responsibility to help these relatives um, get the reparations and justice they deserve from the atrocities that happened in their communities as a direct result of, you know, the World Banks, the IMF fund, the, the murderers trained at the School of the Americas. And um, so when I came back, it was almost time for another full moon. And so I wrote this poem thinking about full moon intentions and what I want to see going forward as a result of this journey that I was um, privileged to go on. Can I ever grow the fires to soothe the river's flow from my eyes? Forests of flame felled by machete blades that massacre any signs of rain. Trained by America's malice, pacified by power to control water. This lake is the graveyard, shining farmland villages submerged for electrical energy wielding genocide, actively resisted with each sharing of knowledge and skills passed on, held in humble hands of farmers being guided by seeds and intelligence unparalleled. It is this work of ancients that calls us to transform from these stories held in the revolution of our hearts. I can never go back to these places where I knelt in grief, planting stone and soul wounding, my hands could not bury it deep enough. And sometimes it's as if my cries are not self-sown, but are from another time, or from those who don't release their own. Magwe plant, my endless well of spirit tears, crystallized moon mother, a salve for my fears, limbs scattered to the stars. You understand I am not who I was before, and my child knows the path, continues to lead me to ceremony since he was inside me. Condolence and peace. 
We offered earth and tobacco seven years later, seven generations stronger to the directions of change. And I have learned the heaviest burdens must be carried together, rebuilding as we gaze upon a new world above these waves that subdue our inner inferno, stasis of calm, an illusion of not being responsible for our own emotions. This night within blessed light, I honor them, the missing and murdered, the found and loved, my feeling of being. I will only go forward into the ceremony where our children lead us to where control is now consent and the waters of the world are freed, fertile soil revealed, and the blood of martyrs and saints killed by capitalism gives rise to sustenance and survival and our collective wisdom will be worthy of these seeds who lead us. So those are some words about amaranth. Oh, so I'm gonna read some more poems. All my, I, I picked out a lot of poems um, about plants today because that's where I'm getting my resilience and strength uh, in these times for myself personally. And I know I um, just want to encourage you to find that piece of connection that we, you have with your ancestral strengths and really go there, um, whatever it is, if, it, if it's not writing, if it's not gardening, if it's not planting, um, maybe it's pottery, maybe it's song, maybe it's dance, maybe it's, family, maybe it's being a parent, um, wherever you're at in your journey and whatever connection you have, maybe you're in the process of still asking, um, don't feel free to go there, you know, feel free to feel your full range of emotions in the process to help you make sense of what comes up. And so writing does that for me. Um, so this is a plant poem and I wrote it in collaboration with my friend Fair Marie who did a, who organized an amazing art collaboration called Reverence Rage, a rock opera, um, a Thousand Tiny Mirrors production. So they did a lot of work on that rock opera and this is a poem in collaboration with that, a couple of poems. And um, it's a really cool video that's out there. If you want to look it up, look up A Thousand Tiny Mirrors, Reverence Rage, to see the full uh, video collaboration. And so this is a poem about the, coming from the perspective of a plant. Warmth and sunlight never cease, even as seasonal songs rain down in carefully measured cycles that only seeds remember completely turning solar energy sentient and chlorophyll, colors rainbow inner selves green until the time of cold reveals always their colors. Perceptions of plants are limited in this human shell. A pulsating energetic world is contained in senses that are natured and nurtured. Our shared multiversal life with beings older than us and we struggle to imagine our relationship with them. Resist the complete acceptance that our lives are dependent on their exhales and inhales. Breath is sacred. This we have learned over eons is our greatest gratitude, our most humble offering, because it acknowledges the shared atmosphere and the eternity contained in biosphere. Elder teachings require human filters, senses used to make sense of limited human perceptions personifying light and vibration, color and sound traveling in currents that light up into images we can understand. Flora knows us best as we walk and pray, those times we caressed plant medicines with fringed hides and ribbon skirts, with soft leather soles or barefoot connections, and they always reveal which of their family we need for medicine when asked with respect, offerings, and recognition of their beingness. For who are we to name them male or female when they are clearly both and more neither? To remake them in this image branded with scientific names 
genderized out of context of traditional teachings. Those first languages know their names and stories. It is a blessing to speak to elders in original tongues when it was they who gave us breath to exist. Green parent relatives whose medicine is given freely. Ancestral covenants must never be broken in order for our deep roots to honor the succession of seeds passed from hands to soil. The whisper of grasses as fingertips brush over pollen parts. Two spirit energies combining to make flowers, fruit, and our food. An interspecies interplay of real intimacy and relations, winged ones and two-leggeds, winds and animals, water and crawling creations, and even their own selves as closed blossoms practice self-love, an open willing act of replication to create seeds, clear purpose and reciprocity. Simple minds cannot understand it as human spirit is constrained and our own tendrils search the limits of false boundaries. We can only learn how unconditional respect, love and care has nothing to do with human definition or colonizer definition controlled definition, but is made of song and spectrums of color. Infinite vibrations are the truth behind lies of futility. A gift freely given is pure exchange of energy. Medicines plucked from stems of kinship. All lives nurtured from simple acts of sweat and heat. Our bodies are beauty in these functions of truth. Honesty is the universal language that can pass through rectangular cell walls and feelings find their place through openings in circular cells. Within the holiness of those confines, they exist in this time and space. Communicating like always with patience for our limitations, knowledge carriers and healers giving us life freely until we join them as part of our return perpetuity of creation, circles and squares, light and sound, wind and water, contained in vast complex bodies, much like our own external landscape, holding accepting internal teachings of personal truths. Okay, so I didn't realize how quickly time would go by. Um, maybe I'll read one more, let's see couple more. That I feel like are kind of relevant to the times. Here in damp deserts, where Tsimaha gives cleansing breath from beneath dead tumbleweeds an invasive pika, but it's here to stay. I used to run barefoot in these sands before I knew of differences before I internalized power I never had until once again in cosmic time I have made my revolution through eternity that mountains keep safe, sundials hidden in names forgotten that used to teach of monolithic medicine, seeing into being this language that collectively we will pray into resurrection, smells of water sprinkled on dirt floors, prayers of virtue call forth gifts that exhale on currents of strength and beauty, Remember to sing as you bury seed and smile, cry, laugh, and rejoice that first moment of breaking free from beneath earth in stasis. When energy from six directions kissed your emergence into warmth and light, true power are these absolute laws that life begins again. And realizing that memory and reclamation of remembering has nothing to do with our minds. Sending pieces of broken memories into currents and eddies of galaxies gone by. And multitudes of heavens are still spiraling amongst us. Empty spaces are unfulfilled by grief alone. Warmth of touch and homes filled with our soul fullness. Open up selves and shared joy and company. And I am once again reminded of shared breath and the responsibility of relations how they change with fluidity of seasons and how some 
are no longer here except in heart speak. How they grow in rainbow shining of children within their circle, reflected in eyes full of glistening salt water that we spill over ourselves as offerings in deserts that were once oceans, in embraces that have shared decades, an ancient garden leaf fall and decomposition, taking flight these migrations of our being, flutter and soar to warm waters and community where they are welcomed with song and ceremony, wholeness realized and memories healed. Even as we look out towards horizons and solitude, one moment of peace at a time. Okay. This will probably be my last one. Kiss by midnight sky water, new light pollution distorts clarity, yet clearly this coolness is a blessing. Sunflowers glow brightly in darkness, lost circulates, circulates among so much life what stories we carry, what strength we have to hold with gentle silence these collective burdens of eternal moments. Things need to seriously stop, and they have, just for a moment. What if we all looked up at the same time, looked into each other's eyes in unison, and decided once and for all to sing ourselves whole? Let our tears fall and mingle with rain and keep time from coming back until healing created wellness, until we remembered what it was that made us look up all together in the first place. Kuntawaha, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much for this, Yata. Está todo bien. Thank you very much, Beata. You are absolutely amazing. I'm going to pass it over to Elena. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was really great medicine for the soul. And Yata, thank you for all the work that you do in the community with the uh, environmental justice, social justice, reproductive justice. The things that you had to share with us tonight was really powerful in your poetry and the weavings of all the work that you do for each and every one of us. Be mentioned too in your second to last poem, remembering has nothing to do with our mind. You know, and this weaving in with indigenous ways, virtual events, particularly in the wisdom circle where we're at now, is the tapestry of the threads that all our presenters, like yourself, come to share with everyone the richness of your journey and your walks. So thank you, Beata. Uh, we love you. Thank you for being with us uh, this evening. And if you need interpreting services, ASL, I'm going to get you to pin your video on CAT and her label is Interpreter CAT. And while everyone's doing that, uh, I'm also going to invite everyone to come back in if you so wish. That means turning on your videos. And while you're turning on the videos, um, we're going to go to a little commercial break and slide of what's going on. So this is the Indigenous Ways virtual set events. Welcome. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. We have two, the, the Wisdom Circle where we're at now and on Fridays we have the concert series. On our website, which is indigenousways.org, are the links to that. All these events are free and all the events have ASL interpreters. And the recordings that you'll see will also be on our, uh, that you can get, will have the interpreter on. So it's access for everyone. Coming up on Friday, that is the 8th, uh, we'd love for you to join us at six o'clock Mountain Standard Time for Joanne Shenandoah, who uh, will be 
uh, honouring us and blessing us all. And then next Wednesday in this circle, we have the beautiful Mari Sato, who is a, a local here, who will be doing sound healing and blessing us all. Now, all of this is possible because of our sponsors. So I want to take this opportunity to thank the First Peoples Fund, the National Endowment of the Arts, the City of Santa Fe Arts and Culture Department, and also New Mexico Arts. And also I want to give a big shout out to our Indigenous Ways Board. Uh, there's a lot of you on this call uh, this evening and we're grateful to being here. Our May calendar is out and we have a slew of amazing uh, people that are blessing us all at the Wisdom Circle, uh, the second to last Wednesday will be Teresa Candelaria, followed by Terry Vincent, who is a deaf teacher who will be coming in and sharing in this uh, spot. And then on Fridays, following Joanne Shenandoah next week, or this Friday, next Friday we'll have Larry Mitchell, followed by Sonia Disappear Fair and Chris Matthews. Now you can get this calendar, uh, which is a download at the Indigenous Ways virtual events. And then here's all our electronics. We'd love for you to subscribe uh, Facebook. What's happening in this format? We're going to be changing it so we can beam out live through the Zoom, through Facebook, and also bring our Fridays into the same format so we've got this beautiful intimate circle. So we'll be sharing those changes as they come. And then thank you. I know yesterday was giving uh, Tuesday for a lot of nonprofits. We're very grateful to each and every one of you have, who have been supporting us uh, with donations. So these are the downloads that you can do either through our website at donate or people have been posting us checks. Thank you for your support or through Venmo or PayPal. So I want to thank you for that and that helps with our ASL interpreters and also all our artists and guest hosts that are here. And we also know there's at particular times there's some people who can't do this and that's fine. We just want you to tune in and be with us. And then tomorrow, this is something that will be in our newsletter. If you don't receive our newsletter, just go to our homepage, indigenousways.org. And at the bottom there, you can sign up. And we'll tell you more about this. But tomorrow, we're supporting an uh, organization. And this is also what Beata was uh, speaking about, uh, too, in the ways of healing or getting grounded in the multiple things that you do and gathering strength through resilience, finding that peace through our ancestral ways uh, that she spoke about. Tomorrow being the 7th of May, there is an International Day of Blessings for Mother Earth. And uh, starting at seven o'clock Eastern Daylight Time or six o'clock Mountain Daylight Time, uh, at these links here at the bottom, uh, there's an international online gathering and sharing of indigenous knowledge and healing. And we're very honored to be able to support that uh, with the other organizations doing it. There's going to be sharings from elders, wisdom keepers throughout Turtle Island. Uh, so it, we're gonna post those exact links too as well in our newsletter with this beautiful recording of Beata, which will be uh, going out tomorrow. And also, if you are here live, you'll be able to see uh, the electronic links uh, that will be here as well. And with that, I shall turn it over to the beautiful Tash. Yeah, Elena, kia ora ora. This is a beautiful evening. I love Beata. Love you, Beata. Sister, little sister, powerful, short, and sweet. And I'm going to listen to this tomorrow morning so I can take all of your words and poetry in 
tonight. I had a lot going on. I heard most of it, but I really want to hear your poetry because I've I've been getting into poetry lately. So without much ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass the prayer stick over to our brother Homer Hubble, who comes from the Navajo Nation. And all right, Homer, thank you for praying us out. And then after this, if you want to stay on and you want to chat, you want to talk, we have ASL interpreters here. Uh, we're just going to be together if you'd like. And if not, that's all beautiful too. We understand. And thank just, you, Homer. Just before Homer um, prays us out, I want to mention that tomorrow Homer will be one of the elders in this international blessing for Mother Earth. Thank you, Homer. All right. Yeah, Homer. Uh, thank you for inviting me here tonight. Um, I was asked to say the closing prayer tonight, and I, I sincerely do appreciate that. And tonight I'm going to, uh, I was requested to sing a song, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, uh, taking this out this evening. Shri na shanga shi na shanga shi na sha hojo oko na ashanga ne hosan ne ye bakha ako ako na shanga ya tekhil shije ko piya de ko na shanga ka sa na gaya ka pike hojon na ko na shanga she na shanga, she na shanga, she na sha ako hojo ako na shanga. Zil listen ne ye ako 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 na shanga. Toy listen ne ye ako be ye ako na shanga. Gasa at na re ya ga big e hojo na ko na shanga. She na shanga, she na shanga, she na sha ako hojo ako na shanga. Cha aske se ye piya ako ako na shanga. Hayos ka se ko piya ako ako na shanga. Ga sa at na gaya ga pike hojo na ko ako na shanga. She na shanga, she na shanga, she na sha, hojo oko oko na shanga. Ga hashen yatke eshen nishen oko na shanga. Ga ahawan oko oko na shanga. She na shanga, she na shanga. She ain't na sha oko hojo oko na shanga. At nata of kaye a go na shanga. Can nata of so kaye a ka a go a go na shanga. She ain't na shanga. She ain't na shanga. She ain't na sha hojo oko a go na shanga. Ga at hat the tin at keen a go a go na shanga. Ga la in nest an ye a go na shanga. Ga sa at na gaya ka pike was on a go na shanga. She na shanga, she ain't na shanga. She ain't na sha was on a go a go na shanga. Yeah. yeah, Homer, that is beautiful. Thank you very much. That is the original, one of the original versions of a song that the Navajo, our people, came up with when we got 
I was going to say release, but it was really from what I heard from my grandmothers, that song was created during the walk to the long walk to Bosque Redondo and Fort Sumner in 1863 in the winter time. And that me, I walk, me, I walk, I will continue to walk no matter what the road is hard. It's strenuous, it's hard. There's a real temporal momentum in that song that no matter what, we're going to keep persevering, Ooh. no matter what, yeah. and honoring all the different gods that mm. the Navajos pray to, from talking God to uh, yellow corn to white corn and to all the, the beings out there, just honoring all around us, starting with Mother Earth. Our grandmother Earth is first and foremost, and then of course, Father Sky. So it's a beautiful song. Most of us know the truncated version, which is just a summary of it. And we just go, Sheena Sha, Sheena Sha. And we just do it like that. But Homer goes through all of it. So one of these days, Homer, I want you to teach me the full Sheena Sha song, the way you learned it from your people. All right, let's open it up. Everybody join in and talk. Where's everybody <laughs> fun and how y'all doing? That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Really got it there, lady. <laughs> I always get inspired by all the wisdom that is in those short little words in the poem, but it really touches the heart. So thank you for that. Good afternoon. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy taught me everything I know. <laughs> I can die now. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, yeah. new to no, the Kathy. Indigenous Ways Wisdom Circle, we're very honored. Alda Kathy, who just spoke, she uh, kicked off the series, and on the website, if you haven't already seen it, you'll see her incredible uh, presentation about the butterfly vision, butterfly medicine. Thank you, Alda Kathy, for being here. Thank you for having this series. It's awesome hearing all the many different voices and the different ways that people stay true to their heart, heartstrings and their vision for beloved communities. So thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Mom and Harry, would you like to say something? My mom's kind of shy. So anyways, would anybody else like to talk? Jerry, would you like to say some words? Ha, huh, I'm just, um, my heart is very, really grateful. Yeah, my soul is very grateful for your talk. Um, you are a plant whisperer. Mm. You um, are really close and connected to plants. Mm. And that perspective of Mother Earth is, is a very strong and very... Um, very good and um you know hearing the 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 navajo the shinasha song mm. wow um yeah i could really hear the the struggle or the 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 steps taking those steps mm. you know the ahala ahala you know the i'm still going I, i'm mm. still still gonna um, persevere through whatever comes forth and that really could really feel that and but yeah thanks for singing that and singing it from your heart and, and from the ancient ways of the Navajo um, yeah um, thank you yeah Jerry Mm -hmm. May I speak? Absolutely, Robert. Yeah, my name is Robert. Uh, I come from London, Ontario, Canada. Um, 
I'm a long way north from where you are. Um, but as the eagle flies, as the as the crow flies, as the as the whisper from the wind moves. I'm new. I'm an, I'm a student. I come to the fire and uh, it is good, good to be feasting with you. As uh, I believe we, we sit in circle. Sitting in a circle, feeding each other. Mm. It's so important. Because so many are very hungry. Mm. Unknowledgeable of how important the simplicity of the true teachings are. Not about what money's in your bank account, not about our fancy homes, but the simplicity of our Mother Earth. And as we come forth in the springtime and recognize the budding of the on the new on the trees, the plants coming up from the ground. Yet uh, you you honored those plants this evening. You honored Mother Earth. And I say, Jim, which uh, and even though I am a white man, I'm not gonna beat myself up. I say, I just don't I will not I won't be able to understand. No. No. I go to sweats, I go to lodges, uh, and I have been involving myself with Well Variety uh, for the last several years. I've been gifted, and I underline gifted with so much, and the, probably the greatest of all is the eagle feather and the drum. I honor them both. I acknowledge, I acknowledge the four directions, the four colors, the four seasons, the different dialects, the different languages. Even though I don't understand the language, yet I do. Because if I open my heart to the spirit who is close, I will feel and be fed by a language that I don't necessarily understand. Uh, I've been honored with a name. I'm the, my spirit name's the beaver. And uh, I, uh, that was given to me several years ago. And I acknowledge it I, and I honor it. It's not just something flippant, no way. Uh -uh. And uh, I like life today. I enjoy being with you this evening. Uh, my heart is full. I feel the medicines all around me. I acknowledge the, the smudging. I'm not smudging at the moment, but I'm going to smudge before I go to bed tonight. And thanksgiving to you, sisters, brothers. Yes, each of our blood is red. Mm -hmm. And we honor, we honor that blood. We acknowledge that blood. We acknowledge that it is a gift. There are so many of our sisters and brothers who are dying out there this evening. Mm -hmm. Whether it's from drug uh, 
uh, drug addiction, alcoholism, mental addiction, starving because they have no food to put in their bellies. Those who are dying from the virus at the moment. Uh, but yet it is a cleansing. And as much as I honor those people that are moving on this evening, uh, and those who are on the front lines, I have several friends who are working on the front lines in the hospitals, and they're having to separate families so the rest of them don't get sick. And that's very hard. That's a very hard job to do. Uh, well, I wouldn't want to be in that position. Uh, but, you know, again, I thank you. I thank you for your medicine. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's powerful. Mm -hmm. It's given me purpose. It's given me purpose. Just a few years ago, I was told I had six months to live. I got the cancer. That cancer's gone. You know why? Because I took it to prayer. Because I took it to sweat. I took it to the grandfathers, to the grandmothers. And I gave up. I let it go. I surrendered to it. Well, the Creator has another story for me to tell. And I thank you again. I thank you. And I wish you all safety and good health. Mm. Jimmy Quitch. Oh. Oh, oh, thank you so much, thank Robert. Those are some very beautiful words. And I'm glad you made a recovery from cancer. That's a nasty virus also. Um, I wanted to acknowledge our sister, Laura Kolb, who runs Deaf Think Positive out of Ohio. It's a deaf native, uh, deaf and blind, uh, open to all, but exclusively for indigenous people trying to get clean and sober in Ohio. Thank you for being here tonight, Laura. And also thank you for all the work you do with our deaf and blind indigenous brothers and sisters and all others. Again, I like to emphasize we need to have the walls of separation ended. And that's what Indigenous Ways is all about. Love you all. You. Connie Baxter Marlowe, would you like to say something? <clears throat> it's wonderful to be here with you. It's such wonderful things you're doing with Indigenous Ways and your music. Are you guys still singing? <coughs> Unmute me. Yes, we are. We're still singing. And right now with this platform, because all of our festivals got canceled, <coughs> we reverted the festival uh, events to honor the musicians and the presenters and the ASL interpreters for this venue for as long as we can. And we're thinking we might take it through June. We might have enough to get through June. So we'll just see how it goes. But this is definitely purpose and we believe whoever's meant to be here will be here. This is not about numbers or trying to be uh, tooting horns. This is about people are hurting, people are scared, but resilience and rising is the way we have always come through. All mm -hmm. of our ancestors have had mm -hmm. hard roads, whether our ancestors came from Europe on the boats here, or if they came uh, from wherever, our ancestors did not have it as easy as we do today. So in honor of them, we're here and we just want people that need to be here to be here and all others take care of themselves. Even the ones that don't sit on the same platform we think of in the way we should acknowledge the earth. 
we should pray for them too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just wonderful to be here with these beautiful native faces mm -hmm. and hearts and spirits. I've spent a lot of time with native people and I love it. It's, it's a heart place for me. So um, I just want to say, love being here. Like to thank you, Connie, for supporting us. And yes, one of these evenings, we will do a song. Elena and I will do a song or two. Uh, but we really want to put the focus on you guys and the performers and the entertainers, because we know the road. We've been doing it for almost 14 years now, and it's beautiful. It's a sacred journey to travel with music. Uh, so we will definitely talk about singing Powerful Woman in honor of Kathy Sanchez one of these nights. <laughs> I got yes, I, I was on for Kathy. She really shared some beautiful wisdom, oh. Kathy. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor. It's really an honor to be amongst such wonderful, young, gifted, indigenous mm -hmm. thoughts and wisdom. So mm -hmm. thank you and appreciation. Good mm -hmm. Yeah, and also want to honor our sister, Rachelle Pablo from the Navajo Nation. She comes from the amazing community of Gallup, New Mexico. She's currently in a pretty fancy, I think it's an Ivy League university out of Delaware. And but because of the situation, she's back here in Santa Fe. So we're so glad you're back, Rachel. Thank you for joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Tosh. It's an honor to be here and it's wonderful to see you all and um, hear Beata with her mm -hmm. um, powerful words and the medicine that it carries mm -hmm. from the very first time I heard your po poetry believe it was at Mary um, Oishi's birthday years back at the um, outposts mm -hmm. and um, that was the very first time I met you and um, the words were amazing. I met your wonderful husband and from that point on we've um, you know weaved our paths have weaved whether it was at the Mother Earth events and the moon ceremony and um, all these various elements. And thank you for acknowledging Frere. And um, I was able to, I, well, I was an undergrad at IAIA. I was, I, I um, was a roommate with Frere and the brilliance of the words and the mind is constantly going as well. And, and oh, thank God. you for your mm -hmm. words and all the work that you do as well in yeah. your organization I, as well, you know, the various organizations you're a part of. And, um, and um, I, it's so nice to be here and it's nice to be back in um, New Mexico and, mm -hmm. And um, um, also acknowledgement to you, Kathy, mm -hmm. um, you know, Ms. Sanchez, and and you had shared a while back as well, I think a month ago, maybe, or a little more than a month ago. At that time, I was in Delaware, but to yeah. all the attendees to be here, Geraldine in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and um you know, I'm just blessed to be protected at this time and also a lot of prayers out for all the, um, on a global scale, all the suffering and the pray for the healing and, um, and um, all the, the events that are happening. Also understanding to not get caught up in the um, stirring of the energies um, because mm. I believe there's a lot of, um, in balance in our our world and um i'm just um consistently trying to stay centered and those words with the earth and all the poetry and the prayers mm -hmm. very central to my red road and the balance and you know i'm just grateful for it, all of you that's all thanks, thanks. I'm Lisa. 
I just wanted to acknowledge our interpreters, Kat and Zoel. Kat has been with us from the get-go. Thank you so much, Kat. And Zoel, you rock the night. You did a great job, Zoel. Great Zoel. job. And thank you to Tasha and Elena for having us. It was really an honor and a pleasure. And I, the good medicine that we get from this is just, it, it fills me until the rest of the week. So thank you so much for that as well. Thank you. Love you, big kid. And, and Zoel, I got to tell you, you remind me of a young me when I was 29, 30 years old, trying <laughs> to get uh, uh, proficient and certified. And boy, what a road. No matter what, you're on your road, girlfriend. You're rocking it. I can't wait to talk yep. to you. I'll give you yep. a call tomorrow, Zoel, and we'll have a nice long t chat on one of my walks. Thank you all. We're going to go ahead and say good night unless anybody else is just dying to share something. We got Joanne Shenandoah Friday. So yay. That's going to be exciting. Mom, Harry, don't forget. Joanne <laughs> Shenandoah Friday night. Kathy Sanchez, don't forget. Tell her, remind me. <laughs> All right, this is from Kay Caleb. She's saying thank you for this awesome lady. Right as you got. Hey, Caleb, what do you think of our new interpreter, Zoel? Does she rock or what? <laughs> it's hard putting Zoel on the spot, huh? Zoel, you did great. Love you all. Yeah, I would like to just say um, I just heard today that the whole in the ozone layer in in um the um southern arctic circle is now closed up mm -hmm. and the waters are clearing up they're healing they're so clear <laughs> lake michigan is so clear they can see a boat that a ship that was <laughs> shipwrecked from the sky is so clear now so this is a good thing you know, this Mother Earth is slapping us all down so that Earth can heal. Even though we're hey. up, the Earth has to heal. Thank you, Annie. That Thank is Annie. awesome. Thank Beautiful, you. Thank you, Annie. And uh, bye, everybody. We love you. We love you. I'm going to eat dinner. I'm you hungry. On Friday. Thank you, Thank you for your words. Thank you. Hey, let's much. give it up for Beata. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. As, we say, as we say back home. <laughs> as we say back home. Hey everybody, thanks for having me. And yeah, just thank you for all your words and comments that you shared. And um let's let's help this process along. You know what's happening. Let's pay attention to these these teachings that are coming, you know they're hard. Um we're finding out what it is we can live without and what we can't. You know, and um, let's hold on to those. Yes. Keep walking, it's it's sister. Help it along as you like another role I have is as a birth we'll worker. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Take a breath. Step outside. Feel the rain. your hands, feel my face, touch the earth, touch the earth, touch the earth. Yeah.